Hello everyone, uh, this is Shiju Filippos and I will be your, your presenter for the day. Uh, today we will be discussing about the design factors affecting the cost of a building. Now as we know there are a lot of type of cost which is associated with a building including the construction cost, the operational cost, uh, the business, business cost and even the whole life cost. So to reduce this cost as much as possible is, an, uh, is the best thing to do. Uh, to reduce the Im impact of building on an environmental factors. Okay. Now, there are a lot of design variables which, we, which uh, decide on the type of course which is involved in the building. Now, we, if we have a look at or take care of the design variables, we can decide on or reduce or keep our cost of the building in a scheduled budget. Now, let us discuss about the design factors or this few design variables of the building. First, it is the plan shape, the shape of the plan. The regular or aligned the shape of the plan is the, the lesser the cost is going to be. That is, if you have a zigzag plan or maybe an irregular shape of plan, then the cost is going to be automatically higher compared to the plain or squared one or a regular shaped one. So the plan shape is going to be one design variable which is going to decide the cost factors. Total building height. What is the building height of the total build, uh, building, total height of the building? Now that is one another bigger uh, criteria. As the height of the building increases, the cost will automatically get increased. Now story height, we, as we know size, there are skyscrapers which are 51 stories or more. And when you compare a skyscraper with a low story building, the cost inquired for building up a skyscraper is going to be multiple times more than that is required for a, a low story building because of the complications in the construction and the extra safety, the security and all the HVACs, all the systems which has to be implemented in a sky, skyscraper. Then you have your circulation area. Depending on the circulation area, the requirement, the cost is going to vary. Then you have your material specification. What is the type of materials that you want to use? Whether if you want to use high-end materials or highly advanced materials for everything, the cost is going to be that much, high quality materials in comparison to the low quality materials. So it's again a choice of you what you want to have, whether you want to go for a high, uh, high quality material with a high cost or a medium quality or a mix of it. So all these are the design variables like the plan shape, the total building height, the story height, the circulation area and the material specifications which serve as a design variables for constructions or in buildings. Now let us discuss the how each design variables or each part of the buildings has uh, uh, what are the factors which affect these uh, parts of the buildings. Like for example, foundation, if you take uh, the case of foundation, what may be the principle or the main constraint which is going to decide? And then what are the secondary variables? Okay, so taking the case of foundations, footprint area at grade is going to be the main principal variable. And in case of secondary variables, you have soil conditions, uh, site configurations, water table, seismic zone, weight soil, disp uh, weight, soil disposal and grade slab specs. For example, if uh, the seismic zone, let us take the case of seismic zone. If you know that the land into which the building is being built is in a seismic zone, the foundation has to be stronger than compared to a building which is, which is going to be built in a non-seismic zone. So same case is with, with the case of a soil configurations. If the soil is strong to support the building, the pre uh, preparation work required for the, uh, to prepare the soil will be lesser in compared to a less uh, less fixture point or le less uh, conditions uh, of the soil now let us take the case of basement in case of basement the volume of the basement is going to be the principal variable and secondary variables are going to be soil conditions soil disposal water table and flow, that, that is the speed of the flow of water, depth of the basement, type of soil retention and seismic zone. That is for basement, volume of the basement is going to be your principal variable and condition, soil conditions and all these are going to be the secondary variables. Depending on the, uh, uh, what is the variables 
uh, effect is going to be the cost is going to vary. Now superstructure, we will be discussing in about superstructure in detail later but just to give an idea superstructure two buildings a building has two parts superstructure and substructure. Superstructure is that part of the building which is above the ground and substructure is going to be that part of the building which is below the ground in simple terms. So in case of superstructures the principal vari variables are going to be area of supported floor and the roof and your secondary variables is going to be number of stories, floor to floor height, the building configurations, loading, span and base sizes, roof type and openings, again seismic zone, MEP integration that is mechanical, electrical and plumbing integrations, type of cladding system. So all these are going to be the principal va uh, secondary variables and area of supported floor and roof is going to be the principal variables in case of superstructure. Now let us discuss about interior construction as an element. For interior construction the principal variable is going to be the gross floor area or the GFA and the second, secondary variables are going to be floor to ceiling height, partition or partition or wall density, flexibility that is required, extent of glazing and the special features which is required as part of the con interior constructions. So for interior construction gro gross floor area or GFA is going to be your principal variables. Secondary variables are going to be floor to ceiling heights, partition wall density, flexibility that is required, extent of glazing and the special features. Staircases, now let us discuss about staircases as a system or an element. For staircases the number or flights number of flights or number of stairs is going to be the principal variable. Secondary variable is going to be floor to floor heights, fire regulations, the type of staircase which is going to be used or which has to be used. So in case of staircases the principal variable will be number of flights, secondary variables will be floor to floor heights, fire regulations and staircase type. Interior finishes as a system or element. The principal variable is going to be net floor area or the NFA and then the secondary variables is going to be floor to ceiling height again, area of enclosed and finished spaces, type of ceiling and special finish requirements. So these are the cases uh, the principal variables and the secondary variables for interior finishes. Transportations, now transportation can be vertical transportations, example uh, the elevators, the lift uh, or, or escalators, all this can be transportation, vertical transportations and then you have horizontal transportations and for the principal variable for transportation is going to be number of stories of the buildings and then the secondary variables is going to be the capacity and speed required, type of drive system, number of stories building occupancies. So for transportation number of stories is going to be the principal variable, secondary variables are going to be capacity, speed requirement, type of drive system, number of stories and building occupancy. Now special construction as a system or element. Principal variable is going to be building function, what is the function of the building. Secondary variables is going to be special user requirements like classrooms or cafeteria or gymnasiums in a school that is going to be the secondary variables. General conditions as a system or element. Value of construction is going to be your principal variable. Secondary variable is time for construction, temporary utility, availability, temporary utility availability, site access, storage, insurance, interest rate, market conditions, everything. So this are we are talking in for a general conditions. If you are talking about general conditions, the principal variable is going to be the value of the construction, secondary variables is going to be the time which is required or time which is available for the construction to be completed, temporary utility availability, site access, how easily the site can be accessed, storage, the insurance, the interest rate and the market conditions. Now site work as a system or element. For the site work as a system or element, the principal variable is going to be the developed area of site and the secondary variables is going to be site configurations and levels, 
paved areas, special features required, demolitions if required if any, soil disposal and compactions, soil conditions, exterior lightings, utilities, extent of landscaping. All these are part of secondary variables for site work. And the principal variable is the development area of or the developed area of site. Now, plumbing as a system or an element. Principal variable is going to be the density of fixtures which is used in the plumbing or the number of fixtures which has to be used. That is the density of fixtures. That is going to be the principal variable. Secondary variables are going to be building occupancy, story heights, that is number of uh, uh, how many stories are, stories are there, roof area, building configurations, special system requirements. For plumping, as we said, density of fixtures is going to be the principal variables and the building occupancy and similar terms are going to be your secondary variables. HVAC or heating, ventilation and air conditioning as a system or element. Principal variable is going to be heating and cooling load. What is the requirement? How much heating is required? How much cooling is required? That is going to be your principal variable. Secondary variable is going to be building occupancy and orientations. Orientation, building orientation, building area and volume, building configurations, story heights, thermal insulation provided, heat loss and gain, local climate. All these are going to be your secondary variables. That is your building occupancy and orientations, building area and volume, building uh, configurations, story heights, thermal insulation provided, heat and loss gain, local climate and then the principal variable is going to be the heating and cooling load for HVAC. Now in case of fire protection as a system or an element, you have the principal variable as the area, what is the area to be protected and the secondary variables as number of stories, story, what is the height of the story, fire and insurance regulations and internal configurations. So the fire protection, the main variable is the area which has to be protected. Electrical as a system, the connected load, what is the connected load to uh, the system or for the building that is going to be or the connected load required for the building that is going to be the principal variable. Secondary variables is going to be building area, number of stories, building occupancy, standby requirements, lighting levels, power supply and distribution system. So all these are part of the secondary variables for electrical and the connected load is going to be what is the load requirement for the building is going to be the principal variable. Now roofing as a system, the principal variable is going to be area of the roof. What is the total area of the roof which, which is required for the building? So that is going to be your principal variable. Secondary variables, roof of configurations and type numbers uh, or roof of configuration and type of roof configuration and then type of openings which is required, thermal and sound insulation requirements, extent of glazing. All these things are going to be a lot of, we discuss each system as an element. We see there are a lot of common things like uh, building area, number of stories, occupancy as a common part, the secondary variables. But for each element, the principal variables will be different. So while designing for a building, if you want to keep the cost to the minimum as possible, you have to take strategies used to have you, you need to use strategies in which you can use this you can mix these design variables to the maximum thank you